Welcome back everyone to Fallout and today's episode we are in Junktown. So we start off by speaking to the guard here on the front entrance asking if he knows where the best place for supplies would be and he directs us to Dark Horses run by Killian. So we start making our way inside extremely slowly initially <laughs> and eventually picking up the pace with our goose step sprint and we start making our way over to Dark Waters. No one wants to speak to us so we hurry along and head towards the hospital initially. Just want to have a quick stop off over at the hospital. We make our way inside, speak to the doc. But we're not injured, so we don't need to speak to him. What we do, want to explore this ladder behind him. And inside we've got a shifty looking guy here called a rotund midget. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we speak to the rotund midget, asking him what he's doing. And he tells us the body parts are ready to go to the hub. Let's try and lie to him, tell him, of course, that's why we're here. But it's the iguana man Bob. Have to lie our way out of trouble here. Tell him we have a little bit of trouble thinking sometimes. Luckily, so does he. And we've uncovered that the iguana bits that Bob sells is actually human meat. So let's get out of here quickly before we end up in a kebab. And straight up the ladder we go. Next step, or next stop, is over in Killian's shop, Dark Water. So let's, yet again, extremely slowly walk over. <laughs> Everything in this game is, uh, is pretty slow, to be fair. Can I help you? The name's Killian. Killian Darkwater. I'm the mayor of this fine town. And who might you be? Not much up that way except desert and shady sands. You from there? Oh yeah, sure you do. And when you were a baby, your crib was a safe. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Ain't the worst story I've been told. So, what can I do for you? Well, Junk Town's not much, but it's home. Mostly we trade with people or let them forget their troubles for a bit. Of course, we have our share of problems. From outside, we've had the occasional to do with the cons, but they've been pretty quiet lately. Inside, trouble's been from the skulls, and I hear some strange things happening down by the hub, but they haven't affected us yet. Knock on my mother-in-law's head. You bet. May not be as big as some in the hub, but people usually find what they're looking for. Take a look around. So almost the second that we finish speaking with Killian, who is the poor man's Harrison Ford, uh, with the chin scar included, an assassin walks in to try and take out the mayor here. Gizmo sends his regards. And we need to get straight into combat here. Or very slowly get into combat. And hope that Ian doesn't take out half the town guard as well with his misplaced shots. Naturally, I've run out of action points, so I can't do anything at all. And the guards slowly flood the room to try and take this assassin out. He gets another free shot at Killian. I take a risky shot here at the assassin. Miss completely. Hit a guard. Could have the, the whole town after me now. And we've got the most inept town guard here missing at point blank range. And I take another risky shot. Play it safe with the torso. Managed to make a connection this time. And this guy is sponging the bullets, but Ian finally puts him down. And we have foiled that assassination attempt. Listen, thanks for saving my life. It's a mighty brave thing to do. 
Now, it looks like we've got ourselves a situation here. I know Gizmo's behind this, but I need proof. You interested in helping? You have to wear a recorder and tape Gizmo confessing. Or plant this wiretap in his office. Either way. And we got him. All right. I owe you. Here's the bug in the wiretap. You let me know when it's done. And good luck. Okay, so we are now turning into a rat, basically, wearing a recorder. But we're going to first stop at the hotel, the Crash House Hotel, for some rest, for some sleep. We've not slept since the start of this game. Let's just book a room for one night and take a little bit of rest. Well earned rest, I think, so far. Upon waking, the hotel owner comes rushing in to tell us that Cynthia, some lady, has been held hostage in the next room. And we can see there at the top of the screen, poor Cynthia, held, held hostage by some crazy guy. So it's time to use our best hostage negotiation skills to bring this to a close here. There's no need for violence, let's talk about this. This guy's crazy, blood flows, man, blood flows, it's going to spill all over this room if you don't get out of here. Let's try and help. Give me a moment to think about this. We go back, second bite of the cherry. Eventually. Here we go, speak to him, there we go. <laughs> I don't want to hurt her, but I will. Why would you want to hurt her? She laughed at me, they all laughed at me. I make them pay, I swear. Let's work through this, okay? Give this guy some more time to think. And let's have our third bite of this hostage negotiation. You want some money? I want my helicopter out of here. I want to leave peacefully. No money, but you can walk away. No one will do anything, I promise. That's okay, I guess. There we go. Crisis averted. We get 1,000 XP. And we go over and speak to Cynthia. And we try our best flirting attempt with her. We can really take care of you later. But, as in real life, absolutely, I have the door slammed in my face. <laughs> it's time now what to go and want? speak to Gizmo. Oh, crazy man. I don't know what you're talking about. Such as And let me guess you're that someone Well how can I trust you? <laughs> All right we can do this but you work for me you better know that nobody ever double-crosses Gizmo and lives to talk about it. You got me? <laughs> That's easy. I want him dead because he cramps my business. So, what are you doing for me? Good. Return with the dog tags he wears around his neck as proof. And we never had this conversation. You don't mention this to anyone. No one double crosses me. No one. So we've stitched this guy right up now. We've got it all on tape. We're heading back over to Darkwater. So, did you get the evidence? Yes, we do. Which? Bug or tape? Let's hear it. That's the first time I've been happy to hear his voice. Thanks, friend. Now, time for you and me to take care of the other business. Well, thanks again. 
Well, listen, I'm gonna take the guards and run Gizmo and his cronies out of town. I could use another gun. You up for it? Might be good for a laugh. Go to Lars at the guard station. He'll fill you in. Now listen, this town owes you a lot. So we took this guy for a shotgun and some shells, and we head straight over to the town guard. Let's go down. Let's take out Gizmo. And here we go. The shootout starts. He doesn't even move from his desk. He's just sat there still. Too big, presumably, to get out from behind his desk. He was a pretty big guy. Let's use our new shotgun. Let's see how this goes. Fill both barrels with 12 gauge. But obviously, we run out of action points before we can do anything. <laughs> Yeah, again, guilty of not turning on target in mode. We give Gizmo a face full of 12 gauge, face full of lead, and that is him gone dead over the desk. And so is his guard, Ezo. And that is it. We've saved the town from this tyranny of this typical gangster. Stereotypical 80s gangster. <laughs> I'm back at the guards. We get 600 XP. We also get 500 caps for our troubles. We run back to the casino to go back and loot those bodies of Gizmo and Ezo. Obviously taking the bookcases too. Getting a box of noodles. In the inventory first time for once. I start inspecting these bodies here. 50 caps, nice. This guy's got plenty on him here. 100 caps, 20 bullets for his pistol that we're going to take as well. Looks like a little, I don't know what it is, a Luger or something, who knows. And then forgetting that the kebabs are actually made out of human meat, we take the kebabs too. <laughs> And after checking the final bookcase, it is time now to literally go and see a man about a dog. Because we go and get the goodest companion of them all. Dog meat. And there he is. Woof. <laughs> so our leather jacket, because we're wearing a leather jacket, that attracts the dog away from this man called Phil. Who doesn't trust him, he says he's a killer, but that's what we need. We go and double check his bookshelf, if we can. But we have now recruited dog meat so our party now grows to three we've got Ian dog meat and obviously myself we head over to the scum pit which is a bar in town Jaeger Jaeger he wants a couple of Jaeger bombs two for one that's what gets you when you're out there two for one Jaegers kills you man and we speak to the barman here Neil doesn't have a clue we've never seen a bar before Trying to learn more information, Gizmo's Casino, 
We've already gone and taken that out. Crash house been there too. And as we finish speaking to Neil, this guy shoves this woman to the floor and gets absolutely blown to bits by the loudest gun in the world. I don't even know. I think that's the 223 pistol. The loudest gun in the world. And this guy's in about four pieces on the floor. He deserved it, let's be honest. So let's get on over there, if we can, and speak to the poor girl. I just want to ask some questions, don't need a drink. Who's Saul? That's her boyfriend. We move over, speak to the guy who was singing, give him a compliment. And he gives us a couple of extra locations here as well. Tells us about the boneyard. Also tells us about the brotherhood. So that is marked on our map now, which is useful, because that's going to be some of our next locations coming up in future episodes. We now see a man, dusty leather armour, trench coat, gas mask. Sounds a little bit like ranger armour to me. Obviously NCR, not yet invented, <laughs> but the rangers certainly are. So we start speaking to this guy about his travels. Tycho, Tycho, not too sure, I'll call him Tycho. It's from what used to be Nevada. It's all adding up to be a ranger here. But his grandfather, here we go, his grandfather was a ranger way back when. He taught my father everything he knew. Dad passed it on to me. So I know not to drink glowing water. Interesting to know, not to drink totally clear, clean water. But the guy kindly gives us some survival tips, which is great. But if we share our name, we're friendly to him, we'll leave the conversation, and we go back and speak to him. We can bring him along. And just like that, we've got our newest companion, fourth member of the gang, Tycho. And this guy is pretty badass to be fair. He's got the Desert Ranger armour, he knows how to look after himself, hand to hand combat, melee weapons, guns, you name it. Is a solid, solid companion to have. We move over to the outside, we speak to Saul, who's actually the boyfriend of the lady who was assaulted in the bar, and he's a boxer. So we learn a little bit more about Saul, a little bit more about his brothers here as well. Band of raiders attacked Junktown, they beat them up and got into some boxing matches, or boxing fights. His other brother headed off to the Glow, which, keep that in mind, might be somewhere we have to visit shortly. But we ask him, why do we stay in Junktown? He likes boxing. And he's got a good life with Trish, who we just happened to have met in the bar. That poor woman who got assaulted. She's very important to me. She doesn't like my boxing. Doesn't to understand that it's what I want to do. So we turn marriage counsellor and say that she's just worried about his welfare. He didn't look at it like that. I'm going to go and talk to her. And we get 250 XP for saving their marriage. We want to speak to Gustafa next if we can. See if there's anything on about the boxing. No boxing today. Just missed it, yeah, because 
we've sent Saul off to go and speak to his missus. Now, we're back inside the scum pit now. We're waiting until 6 in the morning. When the bar's closed, no one else is around. Everyone else leaves. And what we do, and what we want to do, is take this little urn from the bar. There we go. So we steal the urn from the counter in the bar. And we make our way over shortly. Back over. Once we can manage to get ourselves out the door, we make our way back over to the hotel. And we speak to the leader of the skulls. Tell him that we want to join. And we'll tell him that we're going to prove ourselves. Steal that old bastard's wife's ashes from the bar. Well, actually, we've already got it, man. And he tells us that we're going to go and assassinate him tonight. So I'd say we're going to take a little bit of time. And obviously, we've already double-crossed Gizmo. We're going to double-cross this guy as well. Trying to save the town, trying to clean this town up. And double-cross the bad guys. And we make our way over to the guards to fill them in on the plan. We start running off. Slowly, slowly, as always. There is nothing quick about this game. <laughs> Head to the exit grid, and here we go. We're back at the front. We're running over to the guards. We want to speak to the guard captain here. Lars. And we'll let them know the plan that we've just learned. The skulls I want to kill. Neil. But of course we're going to join in on the ambush. We're all back in the bar. And here we go. Speeding up the shootout for you. Vinny, who looks suspiciously like Ian. There's a shootout going on inside that we can't see, and that is it. They are gone. Vinny and the Skulls are gone. We return the ashes back to Neil, and we get free drinks for the rest of our lives. Which we don't abuse. We just literally head straight for the exit. This guy here tells us the gates are closed. No problem. I'll see you in the morning. And as we wait. Until the morning. 6am. For reasons unknown. The man just assaults us. And jumps us. And we're now in a fight against one of the guards on the gate. Try to run away, doesn't happen. And the rest of the boys jump in at this point, slowly. Cal Noor taking hits, he's on the ground. I'm still just trying to get away from this situation, I want nothing of it. But it's too late. Cal Noor was killed by, I think, Tycho. And worried that we've got the whole town now on our backs. I think I'm the only worried one. Everyone else is just strutting about. No one cares. Speak to the guard. No one else cares either. So it's time to head off to the hub. We get off there in a hurry. We jumped. Ambushed. By a group of raiders here. Make light work of them. Again, somebody looks suspiciously like Ian. Dogmeat rushes over, sprints to this person. Ian puts a bullet in his back. Bloody Ian shoots Dogmeat. 
but the raiders retreat and off they go. And with that, we carry on our journey to the hub. Time to do some shopping, time to do some gambling. If we ever get there. Merchants, nice and easy, don't need to do anything with them. Time to finally finish our long journey to the hub. And that is where you will find us, the gang, in the next video. So guys, please join us for the next episode. See you all then.